So, let's talk about an adult topic. By which I mean adulting, by which I mean I had to buy a car. So, as I mentioned in a vlog post a couple weeks ago, or earlier in the month, and by earlier in the month, I mean October, um, I had to buy a car, or to say, my my old car was totaled, my, which was a 08 Hyundai Accent, which I got new, and so I had to find myself having to buy a car. I've been borrowing a car from a relative for commuting to work over the uh, past month or so. What This has been recorded in the last full week of October. Um, go through the process of going through, of getting stuff together to make sure it is sufficient down payment for a car that also didn't clean me out. And then this weekend, I went and closed the deal on a car. So I'm here to talk about that, that August topic, um, my experiences and useful notes for people. So with that in mind, basically, like general, like general useful things for People who have not bought a car yet, or buy them, or most of the, the majority of the grunt work for the car by themselves, and want someone to, and are doing the assistance going on actually picking up the car now, or closing the deal on a car. Now, I did have parents with me on this, but they did not play any active role in the actual closing of the deal of the car. They did not co sign on the loan. They're not um, actively involved in negotiation or anything like that. This was a strictly me thing. Um, me doing this vlog, by the way, is kind of brought on by a episode of one of the spinoff podcasts that Remap Radio has done with their HOA series, um, which if you're not a Remap Radio backer, um, I do would recommend backing them. It's a, they're a very good podcast, and I will put a link to them and to their whole, to the site in the show notes. In any case, moving on. Uh, so basically over the course of October, um, I was about that more or less doing research on cars, because what I was looking for and what my ultimate price range would be and talking to the bank and that sort of thing. I do not do my banking through, not to give too much information for myself, I don't do my banking through any of the big major national banks, not Chase, not um, Bank of America, not U.S. Bank, and things like that. I, I go through a local credit union. Um, I prefer doing the local credit union, not just because I'm down on big corporation or anything like that, or big bank. I mean, I'm the big banks kind of suck. Um, Chase, in particular, sucks, but... Um, like my general vibe as a local credit union is they're local. They're generally a big chunk of the ownership of the credit union is more in the community or in the state, and they are more responsive to the needs of individual members like myself than something like Chase or U.S. Bank would be. So that's my like decision there um and this worked really well here because basically I'll go for a couple times over the month i talked to a loan officer at my local credit union and figured out my credit score was what the interest rate would probably be and additional useful stuff like oh um you get an interest rate discount if you're um getting a newer car that's a hybrid and um you get an interest rate discount if you have existing services at the bank and that sort of thing. And so it's a really like, like useful stuff to know in advance coming in. Like, Oh, okay. This is how much I'm expected to pay for uh, interest based on this duration of the loan and how much the, um, how much the down payment is going to be and all this, that, and the other thing. Uh, 
And that's really useful to have going forward. And also, if you have an existing credit history and banking history with a credit union, uh, it gives you the additional advantage of when you're like making the whole approval process for the loan better, which leads to my first piece of advice, um, which would, none of this is, none of this is quote, unquote, financial investment advice. This is just general useful things I learned, which is, this is something I've seen at plenty of other places as well. So this isn't just a me thing is go to your bank. Once you figure out approximately what you're looking for in a car and how much you're expecting to pay for, for it, for like the total amount and see if you can get pre-approved for the loan from your bank first. In particular, if you're going through a credit union as well, um, the advantage of something called um, the CUDL or Cuddle system, um, which I'm going to, which basically um, stands for Credit Union Direct Lending. Um, and the idea being is that this is your credit union communicating with the bank, with your bank directly saving a whole lot of paperwork and things having to go back and forth at the time. Um, at the actual like time of the, of doing everything at the dealership. So this saves a bunch of effort there. Now it's entirely possible that your dealership, that the dealership that you're dealing business with might not do that, be involved with that. But so for the dealership that I was getting my car through, it was a, it was a manufacturer dealership in terms of our manufacturer affiliated dealership. It wasn't like, um, Rando's auto or something like that. I'm trying not to give too much away in terms of like, specific dealerships in my area, mainly because the name wouldn't mean anything to you. Um, but Bill Ambeer's auto dealers or something like that to use a, a sports person. Not because he's in the Portland area, but because sports sports people tend to invest money in car dealerships. So something to do with their money, uh, even if they're not necessarily going to be, even if they're getting traded from the area and going somewhere else. Um, yeah, such is the case with a couple Blazers, uh, Portland Trail Blazers. But in any case, uh, so with that in mind. They were able to very quickly, even on a Saturday, confirm the the rate that I'd been um, quoted, and along with a bunch of other things, and get all that taken care of that day. So that is very, very helpful, and streamlined the process a great deal, and minimized a lot of the haggling. Now they still tried to say, oh, hey, you can get the, your loan conditions through us at the dealership, but, and it's entirely possible. They could have in fact given me a, a lower interest rate, but the overall process of getting out the door was much relatively seamless in terms of me having to like, I still have to fill out paperwork and that sort of thing, but having to get a whole bunch of offers and numbers thrown at me and me getting potentially overwhelmed and getting upsold on something I didn't want to get upsold on. With that in mind, also, it certainly could help that I was, I'm buying a used car. And as part of this, the whole thing was, as part of the process of getting the used car, um, I did spend a lot of this past of the past month on like auto trader and CarMax looking at cars and that are available in local inventory, how much they're going for, what their features are, um, looking at reviews, that sort of thing. So I spent about a month of research for ultimately what ended up being three hours, which probably could have been less since the large chunk of that was sitting around and waiting. Um, a few hours at the car dealership, getting the, act, the actual process of getting the car. So that was a 
the, the process there is like do do all your homework in advance do a lot of research into the car that you want not both not just in terms of your features but also reviews of your car of the car um this car in question like it started out at a particular price but kind of a like over the course of the month that the dealership started bringing down the price on the car but it was still a relatively new car and it's in good condition so it was also an instance of okay um like this car is going like this car has gone down a considerable amount um practically like um 20 percent over the course of this month and the carmax report is clean um it has everything i'm looking for in this car in a car i feel like like this feels like something where it's work going for so another issue issue is be willing to be patient on a car there is the, you are risking having a having somebody swoop out from under you and get it at the dealership but i apologize for the uh, color shift over there i have a tv screensaver thing going on anyway um anyway to get back to the, the point um waiting for like good things can come to those who wait in terms of um what you can expect to pay for the car for a car if it's a used one because if it especially if it's like i would describe it the car i got as being a sort of a semi-luxury model um a lot of those like in that case you may have people going looking around more for trying to find something that has additional bells and whistles of the particular model of car they want and maybe this one didn't quite have what they wanted and that's okay because it had what i wanted and that's what max um so there's that next up is as far as for my prep i did going in um i did go and like prepare a bunch of questions beforehand like just go through the um carfax report if there's anything you're like huh this is something i'm unfamiliar with um or there's, there i would like more information about uh have notes on that uh i'd also say from a feature stand not from feature standpoint but from a um from a preparation standpoint um i and for for my for, for getting this car i did in addition to calling the dealership to make sure they still had it before i came out i scheduled an appointment in advance and then when i determined that i was able to come in sooner i called in again to make sure both was still available and say hey can i come in sooner um because that actually under this circumstances i suspect it probably put me on a good footing with the dealership because they gave them it gave the impression that i was more inclined to buy which to me to a degree i was but it's put them on a good put you on a good footing um again also pre-approved pre-approved on the loan and that sort of thing once you come in and let you know that you're pre-approved on the loan um also kind of helps because it it's lets the dealer gives the dealership a sense that yes we are we are inclined for a to close a deal um like this is a, this is a good candidate to close a deal and they might even decide hey we're going to hang on to this car for this person because we have a more solid bite than someone who just wanted us off the street. Uh, otherwise, as far as the, the, the main chunk of this is once I had all of those ducks in a row, the actual process of getting in the car, again, if it, like they were the main cause for the delay and that caused me to be there for three hours was them having to deal with paperwork 
a whole bunch of other customers at the same time, um, and maybe not necessarily being sufficiently staffed, which is not completely their fault. That's it's a little their fault, but it's not totally their fault. Um, but it meant like, okay, like I'm sitting around waiting for a bit and reading a book on my phone, but they're not spending that time. Like, this is not three hours being set spent being aggressively upsold or that sort of thing. It's just three hours kind of sitting and waiting. Um, and then once I actually got to talking to a person to finish out the loan agreement and for them to up student upsell me on the extras that they're required to do by the manufacturer and me to say no, that like all like all of that part, all the parts spent more or less talking to people probably was total about an hour, hour and a half. Like this is potentially a situation where it where like if I had come in at a much slower time, this could have been again an hour and a half to an hour time hour trip. Um so that's the other like big part of it, I think, in terms of um like I think the main reason why I decided to go to go on a weekend, potentially during a busy portion of the day, was mainly because like I was a little concerned that somebody might finally like, snag the car before then, because otherwise I was absolutely re ready in every other respect in terms of um, loans and having the money ready and all that sort of stuff. And like the point where like, I had like three or four people, including the loan officer at the bank saying, any particular reason why you're waiting for Monday? Um, so like, Oh, and once I got information from the bank, like, about CUDL and that sort of stuff. Like, oh, I don't actually need to wait until a weekday um, necessarily for the car, considering I've got everything else in order and everything otherwise lined up and the car is there and it's what I'm looking for. And that pretty much covers all the main bases in terms of my like big car buying experience. Uh, the car in question is a... Um, Hyundai Elantra hybrid um, and fairly recent model. So got a really good deal on that. Again, this is one of the cases where it was um, sitting for a while in the, like over the past month or so in dealership. So the price had gone down and, and by amount where like, this is, this would normally be a luxury car, but it's not at a luxury car price. So that, that was, that was pleasant and enjoyable. Uh, as far as for getting a good deal on a good car at a good amount, at a reasonable amount of hassle. Now, your mileage, no pun intended, will vary on this depending on car dealership. Car dealership, but I think getting your ducks in a row about your loan approval checking to see if your if the dealership you're planning to buy the car at at the CU, CUDL or the equivalent um for regular banks in terms of loan processing and having all that together in advance probably streamlines a bunch of the other processes in terms of rather than them having to go through their loan processor to get approval and that sort of thing you can just say approve with my bank it's this bank um they look you up and they go yep i already see that you're approved so we don't have so we don't have to collect as much information and spend as much time filling stuff out and spend as much time upselling you so that covers that next week we will return to the regular scheduled Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe, and also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks, also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that.